Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another video at my YouTube channel and blog. Today I'm going to be walking you through the creation of an envelope with a specialized lettering technique and look on it. Um, it's really fun. It's a tie-dye watercolor. I saw this on Instagram and online in multiple places and I thought that looks really fun. I want to try this out. So I'm going to be creating a watercolor envelope with uh, some lettering on it today. So I'm using the 123 punch board from We Are Memory Keepers. Um, they do have an envelope punch board as well, but I like the 123 punch board because it makes it a little bit easier to make oversized envelopes or anything larger than an A2 envelope. So I like to make five by seven envelopes, which is larger. So I like to use the 123 punch board. So after I have my envelope made, and everything scored and punched out. I then folded up the sides of the envelope just so I could get a good idea of the area that I'm working with. So like I mentioned, I'm gonna be doing some watercoloring and just to give myself a little bit of a guideline, I used a T-square ruler and a pencil to draw on some lines. And then I used an eraser to take away most of the line just to soften it because as we've learned, watercolor traps pencil underneath and I wanted to make sure I could erase it later. Using four different colors of Karen Brush Marker Pro Markers. And the thing that's really cool about this technique is you start with just clean water. So I have some clear water in this water brush. I'm drawing on the letter L for my recipient's first name. Her first name is Lisa. And this was my first time kind of trying this technique. And so I had almost too much water on the surface of my paper. And you'll see here as we go along that by the time I finish the envelope, I have a better idea of how much water I need on the surface of my paper. So right now there's almost like a bubble of water on the paper as I bring the tips of the markers in and dab them onto the area and get that ink kind of flowing and moving. I think this is a little bit too much water. It's gonna water things down and really make them pale once they start to dry. Um, but I did want to leave this in the video so you could see my very first attempts. I'm basically just putting the, uh, the color on the edge of the letter. And this goes for if you're doing letters or shapes or anything like that. You just kind of start from the edge. So I've sped up the video, but I wanted to show you this process for the other letters. So I've drawn on the letter I. I'm bringing in that color on the edges, kind of letting them mix a little bit and then having them kind of mix in the middle. So this is such a fun technique and it doesn't look the same at the end as it does right now because as it dries, the colors kind of mix a little bit more and they kind of move around. So this letter S was uh, particularly hard to do because um, it was hard to see where I was uh, drawing the letter. So in the end, I did use um, a smaller paintbrush and I just, moved those colors around a little bit and smoothed out the edges so that the letter looked correct to me. I've zoomed in a little bit so you can see it better. And I'm gonna slow down the video to show you this letter A. At this point, I was starting to learn how much water I needed on the surface of my paper. And I also learned that um, because you don't want too much water, but you also don't want it to dry completely, that it is a good idea to work rather quickly. So you're going to put your water down for the shape or the letter that you're working on, and then you're really going to start dropping in that color right away and move from marker to marker as fast as you can because um, sometimes you'll have areas that start to dry, especially on the edges or very, very small areas, you'll have them start to dry. I'm dropping in more colors. I also learned that the purple and the yellow didn't mix very well, which I kind of already knew because generally they don't mix well. And also uh, the red and the blue didn't make a very pretty purple. So I tried to make sure I used the purple itself. Also at this point, I started to use the corner of a paper towel just to dab up a little bit of water so that it wasn't so much of a puddle. Dropping in that red, kind of mixing or giving a transition between the purple and the blue, um, getting a nice color difference there. 
I also sopped up some of the big puddle of water from some of the other letters and that left me behind with kind of a weird grayish green spot that I thought I would come back in and add a little more of a bright color. So I added that yellow back in um, just so it looked a little better. So while those dry, I'm writing in Lisa's last name. By the way, Lisa did give me permission to use her name and address on an envelope. So thank you so much to Lisa. Um, I will be putting this in the mail very soon and it will make its way to you. If you would like to submit your name for consideration in future mail or envelopes and videos, there is a link down below in the video description if you're watching at YouTube or at my blog in the sidebar if you're watching it over there. So, and just so you know, and to remind you, if you do submit your name and address for mail art, I do have a new form every single month and that's to keep all the addresses current so that, you know, I'm not picking someone's name and address that was submitted six months ago and they have moved addresses since then. That would be very sad that they would not receive their envelope. So um, I do have a new form every single month. Okay, so I'm finishing up the address here. I'm using a waterproof black pen here. You could use any black pen really because we're going to uh, make this envelope a little bit more water resistant at the end here. But I added my return address on the back flap. This is just a, a mailbox. Then I erased those pencil lines that I drew earlier. And then I'm gonna come in and add more little kind of flower shapes, um, some kind of petal kind of raindrop shapes coming off of her name. Initially, I didn't plan to do this, but I had so much fun doing that sort of tie-dye technique on the letters that I decided I wanted to have uh, more of an impact with more color on this envelope. And I'm so glad I did this because at this point, I was really starting to get used to this particular technique. And um, I think these kind of edges look even better than the letters. So it was really fun. For, you just saw me right here, I drew in that area again. That was because it just started to dry and I could tell in my light that the paper was drying so I thought it would be best to add more water to the surface of the paper so that I could add that color and have it spread. All right, so I've got one side done. I'm gonna to come to the other side. I'm drawing those kind of petal or leaf shapes with my water brush and then dropping in that color and mixing it a little bit. This technique is so fun. I think I want to do some sort of project uh, and have it filled with uh, coloring like this. It's so colorful. It's a different way to get sort of a rainbow look without having it be actual uh, rainbows, if, if you know what I mean. So I'm dropping in more of these shapes. And um, I was initially going to stop here with just like the three petals on each side. But then I decided to add even more just to kind of fill out those areas. I'm also consciously avoiding the top right corner of the envelope. You'll see when I turn it around here and do a few more on the other side that I avoid um, that top corner. In fact, actually I think I add those after I have the postage stamps, but I knew I wanted to avoid that corner for the postage. So I'm going to assemble my envelope now. I'm going to use a little bit of score tape on that bottom flap and this is going to uh, adhere it just enough so that I can have the, the flap on top open and I can put something inside the envelope. When you do it, um, some adhesive on the envelope, make sure you don't go all the way to the corner on that flap because as you can see when it comes up, the flap kind of overhangs the two sides. All right, here we go. Here's where I was talking about where I added more. I decided to add more of these little petal shapes going down toward the bottom corner instead of up because the postage stamps would be up in that top corner. And I didn't want the postage stamps to interfere with my artwork down below. So I'm purposely avoiding that top corner. And I'm just adding more and more of these little things in here, adding more dots, um, bringing this up a little bit. Um, not going too high and dropping in those colors. Okay, so I think if I was to do this envelope again, the colors I would pick would be a magenta pink, a bright lemon yellow, 
and then the same blue kind of cyan color because those three colors mix so well. They don't have any gray spots um, and I think I could blend the colors together even, even more and they wouldn't be any problems. All right, so now that everything is painted, I'm gonna go ahead and put my postage stamps on. Oh, just kidding, we're cleaning up this little area over here. I had a little smudge. All right, so now we're gonna do the postage stamps. I've picked uh, three forever stamps and then a vintage stamp. Technically, all of these stamps are vintage because they're no longer sold, but they are forever stamps. And because this envelope is going to Canada, I needed to have lots of postage. So earlier I alluded to uh, making this envelope more water resistant, and I'm doing that by adding some Distress Microglaze. I'm using a mini round blending tool to smear on the microglaze over the name and address. And this just adds sort of a coating and it seeps into the paper. And then I can take a paper towel and wipe off the excess. You'll notice I'm also avoiding the postage stamps. That's because I don't want to waterproof those. The post uh, will need to cancel those out when this goes through the mail. So I purposely did not put any coating over the top of the postage stamps. And here's the envelope for today, all finished. I hope you guys enjoyed this sort of walk through an experimental technique for me. I think it turned out so fun and I can't wait to do even more projects using this technique. Thanks so much for watching. I'll be back on Friday with my usual Friday live at 12 noon mountain time. I hope you join me. And if you can't join me, you can catch the replay or the edited replay later on uh, Friday afternoon. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.